you probably know who you're going to vote for president. I certainly do. But you probably don't know who you're going to vote for sheriff or the city council or uh, any number of other things, issues on the, on the ballot. Well, this next company, Vote is in, is showing you how your friends are voting and hooking you into a community of other voters. And that's going to change how, how elections are going to be done. Who are you? Uh, my name is David Benetti. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Votizen, and I have a sort of a background in the intersection of technology and politics. Uh, Ten years ago, I created something called USA.gov, which is the centralized portal for the United States government, wow. and uh, now I've sort of uh, paid my attention to how we're going to help improve the election process uh, through these new social tools. Yeah. Well, I just got on Votizen for the first time, and the first thing you do is ask it for Facebook, Twitter, or mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And then it shows you who else is hooked into the system and, and how, sort of who they've endorsed. Like I endorsed Barack Obama. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what does this new social world mean to voting and, and yeah. how are you building a business on this? Right. So the, a lot of stuff there. But I mean, basically yeah. what, what we do is we allow you to sort of view your existing social networks through a civic lens. So find the voters that you know that are in your social networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and then you can uh, activate them to try to accomplish some purpose. If you're supporting President Obama, then you would actually ask them to be able to engage in that action. Uh, so we, we are providing a, 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 a political lens into people's existing social networks, and we think that's really going to be important for where politics is going. Because right now, elected officials and people that are running for office raise a lot of money so they can spend a lot of money on negative TV ads and direct mail and robocalls, the worst of all. Yeah. But in the future, as people pay less and less attention to that and more and more attention to the people they know on their networks, well, then all that activity is going to go online to the social networks. Yeah. And by surfacing the voters, we give everybody a very powerful way to get involved. How is, it, you know, this, it might not change this year, but how is this eventually going to change? Once you get millions and millions of people yeah. into voters, and how is this going to change elections? Well, so one of the big things that people concern about with elections is the, is the over-influence of money, right? And so people need to come in and raise a very large amount of money because they pay for these very expensive techniques. Well, in the future, you're going to have a new form of political currency arise and it's going to be based on people's networks and it's going to be based on the relationships that they have with one another and so as elected officials start to realize that money matters less and less they're going to move more and more to people that can help identify the voters that will help get them elected and so that's fundamentally more democratic uh, it, it produces a, a new form of political currency and our mission is to really make that as important um, as the checks that they get so you know, we want we want friend raising to be as important as fundraising. Yeah, one of the problems with with crowd based systems is I call it the masses are asses, right? <laughs> we all know uh, we all know the brands you know that are big. We know McDonald's, but mm -hmm. we don't know the health food restaurant that's one uh, one off, and it's hard to know about that broccoli serving restaurant, right? Which is right. what we're really looking for in politics. We, we know who Dianne Feinstein is or Barack Obama on the, on, on the Democratic side or Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney on sure. the Republican side, but we don't know about who's running for city council right. or even if there's other choices for Senate. We don't know who those people are, so we usually go with the person we know, right? right? Which is why the incumbent usually has an unfair advantage in this game. How is this new world going to change that and put the focus more on what they're going to do for us? Right. So, I mean, I think it's very insightful. And, and I think the real value in our system, the real power of it, is as we start to go in through that long tail of politics, right, uh, and, and where people are actually helping formulate their opinions. And, and our system has the capability of going all the way down to the school board, right, the things that really matter to your children, your children's education, and give an opportunity to, to reach out and connect with them directly. So from the people that are campaigning, it's important that they know that you're a voter and that you vote frequently and that you're in their district and that you can impact whether or not they get elected so that they're not, you know, just talking on Twitter to, you know, teenagers in Belgium, which, you know, on social media, you don't necessarily know who you're talking to. So by identifying the voters themselves on these long tail issues in city council where 
20 votes will make the difference. Having that personal one-on-one -on -one connection through Facebook, through Twitter, where the elected official knows that you're a voter and you can talk to the elected official, it's gonna dramatically change the game. Yeah. How can we build a relationship with the person running for you know, the city council uh -huh. and watch their career as they move to maybe a, a state senate seat then uh, sure. go for a congress seat? How, how can we watch them and make sure that they're voting the way that we think that they should vote? Well, I, and I think that's the thing. You establish these relationships just person to person like we do on social media and that's why it is so powerful. Those relationships are durable. So they will, they will survive any office that you have. And if you form a relationship with that elected official um, and they represent you and you want to support them for representing you, then you will continue to support them as they move through time. And, and when you form that relationship, then there's, just, there's no amount of negative advertising on television or, or robocalls that will change your mind on that. Well, unless they vote against me, right? And sure. I, what I'm hoping is your system will show me my issues, the things I care about, you know, whether I, I care about no taxes or abortion or mm -hmm. women's rights or whatever the issue is, I want you to say this person voted for your issue and so I can watch that person over time. And if they vo start voting the other way, I want to know that. Yeah, absolutely. And you have that ability to be able to, to make your own judgment and, uh, and to carry that judgment through time. What did, what do you see when you're coming into voters and, and how, how is, fa how is, the social graph sure. exposed. Well, it starts right things. off. I mean, right when you first sign up, the first thing that we ask you to do is to connect at least one of your social networks. And that can be either Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. And then after you uh, sign in, what happens in the background is that we start connecting these two graphs. One, your social graph on whatever it is on that, that network of friends on Facebook, network of followers. And then we take the other side of the equation, which is the actual roles of registered voters. Yes. And so we built the list from the 50 states in the District of Columbia, nearly 200 million people with their voting history, whether or not they voted in the past, and we combine those two databases together. So now you can see the voters in your social network yeah. um, and, and multiple networks. So it sort of is an overlay on top of it. We're not trying to create a new network. We're trying to be able to provide you a lens through the network that you already have and maintain. Yeah. So that's the first step that happens. After that, then you can be provided with some information about your elected officials, the people that are running uh, in, in that, that will be seeking office to represent you. Um, and right now, the, the emphasis is on the presidential race, of course. It's a presidential year. But again, going straight down through governor, constitutional offices, uh, Congress, Senate, State House, State Senate, City Council, School Board, right? I mean, we've really built the system to be able to have a direct uh, connection to all the people that represent you. Yeah. Is this a United States only thing or are you going to show yeah. other countries and yeah. their voting? Well, well? Uh, we'll start with the United States, but, but we believe democracy is a growth business. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we think that that's going to be important uh, uh, to be able to provide these tools as that becomes more and more prevalent, but uh, we'll start in the U.S. Can you see people changing their mind? Sure. You know, yeah. My friend Rocky decided to switch aisles, or yeah. decided to switch his mind on a on a on a thing. Can, does that show up yep. in my yep. system? You do show that. We have a stream that will show the recent activity. Or if somebody actually, like, if somebody responded to your endorsement and said, you know, they they, they reacted to your invitation, uh, so then you will show that this person was recruited through you. And so you can see how if you actually are able to get a lot of endorsements, a lot of you know, pledged votes for that particular candidate, how important you will be to that particular candidate. I mean, one example. So Rick Perry spent $480 per vote that he received in the Iowa caucus. Wow. So if he, you know, if you know two people in Iowa and you, they responded to your invitation and sent up for support for, uh, for Governor Perry, you are effectively a $1,000 donor to the campaign. Wow. So why go off and have rubber chicken dinners and do lots of mailings and all these things to raise all this money to buy television to attack the other guy in hopes that they vote for you? Why don't they just get the votes directly from you? Yeah. And that's the power of social media that makes this just dramatically different and why it's going to fundamentally disrupt the U.S. political system. So I, I was on the plane with John Edwards when he announced for president. Which okay was a whole nother news story eventually. <laughs> sure. But uh, at the time, we thought he was running for president, not, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having a mistress. Yeah. Um, 
But one thing I learned there is some is three states really matter a lot more, and the voters in those states matter a lot more. Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, Nevada was one, mm -hmm. and there, there's a few of these early states. Yeah. You, you talked about why Rick Perry spent $480 per voter. Yeah. Does it show people differently in one of those you know, early states and that they're a, a super important person right now to influence and say, hey, will yeah. you vote for this guy instead yeah. of this guy? Yeah. It's the swing, the swing voters, right? Yeah. And so when you think about the amount of money that's going to be spent on the presidential election, which they anticipate total will be close to $2 billion, it's really only to reach people in a very small handful number of states. Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, uh, like you mentioned. And so um, what they're going to do is they're going to hammer that with television to the point where you literally will sell out. You cannot buy television anymore, yep. right? And they're going to focus all this on not only those states, but a small number of people in those states. And so um, if you actually are able to reach those people, that puts you in an incredible position of influence. And you know, here in California, you know, it's widely anticipated that the state will vote for Obama. If it doesn't, he has no chance of winning. So on the margin, our votes in the presidential election really aren't going to have an influence. Yeah. But if we know a lot of people in Ohio, and we know a lot of people in Florida, and we're able to reach out to them and say, I'm supporting the president, I ask that you support the president as well, now you can have an impact and influence where all this other money is going, where all this attention is going, all the media reports, all these things, but you can reach out to the voters specifically. And so, again, that's a great demonstration of how you can have an impact and an influence that goes through your social network more than just your individual boat. Yeah. What are you guys going to do with your business over the next year? Because it, it sounds like you're going to go more toward issues rather than just the candidates. Yeah, it's going to be both, right? Um, so we have the opportunity for people to be able to express themselves and to be able to, to serve in this position, like I just mentioned, that will become very, very valuable to campaigns, public policy. And it's going to be really more based on the power of people's ideas and their relationships and how they're able to share that. So, you know, we think there's a lot of interesting things that can happen there that I think will benefit mostly those individual voters. They will be in a position to recognize that value for themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, we think that's a lot better than, you know, uh, <laughs> the billions of dollars that go to the robocall vendors. Yeah. How do you guys make money? Is it from the candidates who will pay to get access to the voters? Yeah, so I mean there's going to be, our business model looks a lot like LinkedIn. So in the same way that they charge recruiters to access the network of professionals to f people that are looking for work and want to be matched. So ours works much the same way. So campaigns and causes go into the network of voters. They're finding people that want to support those people and we facilitate that connection. Very cool. Um, tell me a little bit about the technology, I, the, you know, keeping track of all these Facebook and Twitter connections and sure. stuff going on. What, yeah. What's it like building the technology? Uh, well, I mean, the engineers are going to be able to speak to that a lot more credibly than I am. But you know, fundamentally, we're talking about very large amounts of data. Right? We start with the 200 million records of the actual individual voters, more than a billion rows of voter history. And then when you start to add their social networks on top of that, you know, we get into the, into the hundreds of billions very, very quickly. By the way, when I signed up, it showed my voter history. Where did that come from? So these come from the various states, counties, in some cases cities. Uh, it's public information. Uh, it, you do have to make sure that you're using it expressly for a political purpose. Yep. So, for instance, you can't sell shoes or something like that with it. Um, but um, it comes from those various authorities. We've taken more than a year collecting all that information, normalizing it, and, uh, and processing it for accuracy. Uh, and uh, that's what we attach to the social graph. How are you guys funded? Who, who, how do you guys uh, hire all these engineers and, and build a business? Uh, so our lead investor is Founders Fund, uh, yeah. and our board member is Sean Parker. Yeah. Um, and Sean has been at the forefront of a lot of uh, disruptive uh, innovation in various industries. Um, you know, he's sort of fond of saying, you know, we, we disrupted the music industry of Napster, of course. Um, and a lot of people got upset because we reduced the overall amount of money. Um, he's like, we can disrupt this and reduce the amount of money and everyone will be happy. Uh, so, um, you know, it's really about taking an industry that, that really needs a shakeup in the types of approaches. And that change has to come from the outside. Yeah. The system will never reform itself. It's never in its best interest to reform itself. So, you know, the way we view it is that we can make this uh, more democratic. We can give more power to individual people. And so if you can build a, a business around that with a huge opportunity, it's a $10 billion industry. It's grown 25% per year yeah. for 50 years. And replace that with something that people appreciate more, is more democratic. That's a win-win. Very cool. 
What else do we need to know about Buddhism? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I think that's most of the things, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing is just is just the mission. We really are trying to create this new form of political currency, and we think that when people are actually able to view into their networks and view it with that political lens and realize they have a lot more power and influence that they thought they had, yeah. they will start to lose that that feeling like, oh, it doesn't make a difference, and my vote doesn't count. And we've seen that already start to happen. You know, the SOPA PIPA thing that happened on January 18th, where people use the power of social media to have an impact on, uh, on, on that particular public policy debate. Yeah. I think once people realize my vote makes a difference, my action makes a difference, my network makes a difference, we're going to see a lot more people get involved, and we think that's a very good thing for the country. Very cool. Where do we learn more about you guys? So you can come to votizen.com, V-O-T-I-Z-E-N, voting citizen, dot com. Uh, and um, that's where they can learn all they need to know. Sign up, uh, check out their, uh, their social networks, and find the voters, and see how they can impact the election and public policy. Very cool. It's going to be fun to watch you guys over the next year. Thanks so much. Thanks. Mm -hmm.